From KPRC2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Good morning. Welcome to this special edition of Houston Newsmakers as we wrap up our observation of Black History Month. I should have known this, but recently I found out that one of the three living African-American recipients of the Medal of Honor, the United States' highest military award for valor, is from Rocheron and still lives there. His name is Clarence Sasser, who as a 19-year-old was drafted while he was a freshman at the University of Houston. I sat down with him this week and we talked about a number of topics, including the challenge of living in and going from the segregated environment of 1965 Rocheron. The communities were separate. Were separate. Uh, 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 we worked for the whites and like that and everything. But other than work, it was generally separated. You know, you, you stayed it with your with your uh, community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to think a lot of us came out better because the teachers then were more aware of, of the problems that we had to surmount to get along mm -hmm. and they took a little bit better more care and put a little bit more time into us than what the, the teachers do now. How did that prepare you for the University of Houston? Uh, that must have been a real transition coming from the environment here in 65, your segregated class going to University of Houston. What was that transition like? Well, that was, a, a, for me, it was learning. Uh, I always consider myself to be fairly uh, mobile in my thinking and everything and at that point all I wanted was to uh, get some education mm -hmm. and try to uh, have a better life than what my parents had. Uh, produce a better life for my children. Right, right. Uh, so uh, when you got into that, when you got into U of H, of course, um, when you took that part-time job and you ended up not being a full-time student, uh, yeah. then that changed the course of things, That, that didn't changed it? the course of things. And then uh, they would reclassify you to, from a student deferment to a, a eligible for draft. Mm -hmm. And it didn't take long for them to fill that quota. So the Vietnam War draft interrupted his plan for college. He enlisted in June of 1967, three months shy of his 20th birthday. By the time he reached 20, he was already in Vietnam. I was sent to Fort Sam Houston for a medical corpsman school, which is a fairly short school at that, at that point in time. Uh, I would say so, from June to September. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a fairly short school in that uh, the the main thing that was being taught was dressing wounds and things like that. Uh, uh, there was some, uh, uh, let's say, occupational type medicine taught, but primarily it was dressing of wounds and and uh, keep trying to keep somebody alive until you could get medic back. So you knew once you got orders to go to Vietnam, which you said you knew was coming, oh, yeah. once you got those orders, what do you remember as was your mindset? Because you knew what the war, you knew about the war beforehand. Was there some trepidation beforehand once you found out, okay, I'm gonna be going to Vietnam? What is, do you remember what you were thinking? Yeah. Yeah. It was tough, knowing that that was in all probability you would end up dead as a corpsman, uh, as a corpsman or as a, a, a infantry soldier were the worst things you could go over there and. Mm -hmm. uh, there was nothing you could do about it, take it or, or commit some other uh, crime, as they would call it, you know, go AWOL or don't go or some stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we were taught to, to obey and follow orders. Those orders would take him to the Ding Thuong province of Vietnam in September of 1967. And then came this day. So, January 10th. Terrible day. <laughs> Terrible day. 
a terrible day that would lead to this life-changing moment 14 months later in the White House and the presentation of the Medal of Honor. It triggered celebrations for him and his family and from his community to honor their hero, but a reluctant hero. You'll find out why when Houston Newsmakers continues.